Java, a beautiful tropical island of rice paddies and deep jungles. It's really a little island, yet Java has 52 million souls. They are a gentle and industrious people, most of them hardworking and friendly. Many of these people have not heard the gospel. Some are Mohammedans, some are Buddhists, others are believers in Javanese religions, and others are Christians. 52 million Indonesians in Java. It's one of the most thickly populated areas in the world. Javanese transportation is fascinating. In the capital city, over 90,000 men earn their living peddling these rickshaws. A rickshaw is often faster than an automobile in the congested city. Since Java lies so near the equator, crops grow the year round. The women share the duties of the farm by planting the rice. Bamboo is brought from the jungle by river barge. Bamboo is always a popular material and has hundreds of uses. Two Indonesians transport a load of bamboo crates that will be used for everything from pigs to parrots. Oxen in Java are some of the most beautiful in the world. Bridles are fitted through the nostrils when the ox is young. Tasty food is served in the markets. This dish contains over 40 ingredients. Curried lamb, chicken, pork, eggs, cucumbers, bananas, peanuts, and many other items, all piled on rice and topped with fiery red sauce. Very good to anybody's taste. The Javanese are a happy music-loving people. This man demonstrates his musical instrument, which he made from a bamboo stick and a palm leaf. Java, thousands do not know Christ, but they worship gods of wood and stone, gods that do not speak nor hear. But Java also has many wonderful national preachers who do everything possible to give the message of Christ to their own people. They invited Evangelist Osborne to Java for a great open-air gospel campaign. One of the pastors directs the audience in singing of the power of Christ. Mrs. Osborne, with her interpreter, prepares the people for the message. She explains what the Bible is, how Christ died for us, how to pray, 
and the meaning of reverence so that those who have never heard the gospel can know how to receive Christ's blessings. Jesus commanded, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. As St. Paul said, it is the gospel which is the power of God unto salvation. The message is simple. Christ is risen from the dead, but miracles alone will prove it. As it was in Jerusalem when Peter preached Christ to those who denied his resurrection, so Evangelist Osborne forcefully proclaims that Christ is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead. With great power they gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. If Christ is risen, he will do the same miracles that he did before. If he is dead, there can be no miracles wrought in his name. Many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of them was literally thousands. The evangelist preached that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. After the message, the people are asked to take down their umbrellas in reverence during the prayer. No beautiful temple here, no polished altars, no incense, no images, no holy sanctuary, not even a bench. Nothing but an open field of humanity, a preacher of faith, the Bible, and the resurrected Christ ready to confirm his own word. Sentence by sentence, the evangelist prays, then pauses while each phrase is interpreted, then reverently repeated by the audience. The people are assured that he who forgiveth all their iniquities is also he who healeth all their diseases. With childlike faith, they accept God's promise as true. Each one takes his own case to God because Jesus promised, everyone that asketh, receiveth. The people praise God for the answer, believing they have received what they ask him for. The Bible says, sing unto the Lord from the end of the earth and declare his praise in the islands. They shall be turned back that trust in graven images. Hear ye deaf, look ye blind that ye may see. young man was born totally deaf. Through his own faith and that of his friends, Christ restored his hearing. These testimonies fulfill the scripture, make known God's deeds among the people and they also inspire the faith of others. No one has been touched personally. The public realizes that they have been healed through their own faith in Christ. This dear old lady was like the woman in the Bible. She was bowed together and could in no case lift up herself. When Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, Thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Brought to the meeting totally deaf, this woman weeps for joy upon hearing for the first time in many years. None but Christ could restore her hearing in such a miraculous way. This woman was totally blind in one eye. 
it was healed as she prayed with simple faith in Christ. Here's an amazing miracle. A family of three deaf and dumb children are hearing. The first night they attended, one was restored. The mother stayed until all three were delivered, then brought the three of them to testify. As in the Bible, they went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. Hearing and seeing the miracles which were done, there was great joy in that city, as all the people with one accord glorified God for his mighty works. As in the Gospel, multitudes followed Christ, because they saw his miracles which he did on them which were diseased. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, saying, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus, moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. Such was the case of this man. His eyes had been nearly blind. His ears were dead and swollen. He had no feeling below his elbows, and his hands were drawn and lifeless. His fingers were running sores. His legs and feet had no feeling, and on one leg a large ulcer had formed. His testimony was so miraculous that he was asked to visit the evangelist to tell him about it. At the house, he explains that when he first attended the campaign, he had rejected Christ. But on the third day, he believed on the Lord and was healed. He tells how he felt life return to his body the minute he accepted Christ. His wife rejoices too. She also accepted Christ when she saw how he had healed the dreaded plague of leprosy in her husband. Certainly Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. man and his wife are so thankful for what Christ has done in their lives. Far and near, revival reports were carried until, as in the scripture, Christ's fame went throughout the country. All of eastern Java was stirred. So the second great campaign was launched in the next largest city, Surabaya, one million in population. From the tea gardens of the mountains and the rice paddies of the lowlands they came. By trucks as they shared expenses to come from long distances, by rickshaw and bicycle. Just as they brought their sick to Jesus 2,000 years ago, so they bring them to be saved and healed today. From all walks of life, they journeyed long distances to attend the meetings. The roads leading to the Surabaya Crusade were filled with thousands of people coming to hear the gospel of Christ and to see his power manifested. As we see them coming, we remember the gospel. They brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those that were lunatic, and those that had the palsy to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities.
each with his or her own personal problem, hasten to learn of Christ. They come because of one reason. Proof is being presented that Christ is alive, that he's doing the same miracles which he did before he was crucified. Leading their sick, guiding their blind, bringing their children, they come to the living Christ whose power and ministry has never changed. As we watch them come, we cannot help but recall Jesus' words, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This is a momentous hour. In the world today, there are great multitudes of people who have not yet heard the gospel. It's not fair for some to be blessed and re-blessed by the word of God while millions remain in spiritual darkness. Some talk of Christ's second coming, of a second blessing, or of a refilling. These have never heard of his first coming, or received a first blessing, or heard of a first filling. This is not fair. Why should anyone hear the gospel twice before everyone has heard it once? Jesus said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. God says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Each one is to pray and believe for himself. As it is written in the Bible, there hath not failed one word of all his good promises which he hath promised. Jesus said, If thou canst only believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And so the people pray with simple faith. Raising their hands to praise God for the answer, they glorify the Lord with thanksgiving. They truly believed the Lord had answered their prayer. They thanked him for it. Opening the testimonies, an old Chinese man tells how the Lord healed him of paralysis. Swollen from an oriental disease and unable to walk, this old man was carried to the campaign. Hearing the gospel for the first time in his life, he accepted the Lord and was instantly healed. He asked, but why didn't someone tell me about Christ before? I would have accepted him when I was a young man, but no one told me. This old woman explains how the Lord has healed her. We ask her to praise the Lord by saying hallelujah. She did, but with great embarrassment, as it was a brand new word in her vocabulary. God has restored sight to this Indonesian woman who was almost totally blind. Another man tells what the Lord has done for him. He too had never heard of Christ before. Now the Lord has given him peace in his soul and health in his body. A bomb blast during the war had blinded this veteran. Doctors said his eye nerves were dead. He accepted Christ and was instantly healed and can even read. Jesus Christ still opens the eyes of the blind. A little woman shows how she walked for years. Receiving Christ, she's perfectly restored. As in Bible days, the people believed on him when they saw the miracles which he did on those that were diseased. Certainly, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. These thousands do not want fancy lectures on theology. Like other people, they want to see the gospel confirmed with signs and miracles. Another
leper is cleansed by the Lord. There was no feeling below his elbows, but now the Lord has healed him. This little boy was born with terribly deformed feet. Large calluses had formed on the sides of each foot from hobbling on them. They are not completely healed, but the father claims that for the first time in his son's life, he can put his feet flat on the ground and stand straight. The legs of this poor man were so drawn and stiffened that he could not straighten them. Hundreds of people had seen him on the streets walking in this manner. When he believed on Jesus Christ, he was healed and came to praise the Lord for the miracle. What happened here? A deaf man is instantly healed. He jumps, he shouts, but why? Because the deaf spirit has gone out of him. He runs to the platform to tell what God has done. For three weeks he attended the campaign and had not received healing. But now, at last, the answer has come and he is so happy. Can he hear a watch? Yes, he can. Even a watch. Praise the Lord. As it was in the Bible, they were all filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto them. Multitudes of them that saw him turned to the Lord, and many of them that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. This is the Java Harvest representing a generation of souls ready to be reaped if we will follow the example of the book of Acts, that of miracle evangelism. This is what the Bible prophet Joel described. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. This is what Jesus spoke of when he said, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes, look on the fields, for they are white already unto harvest. This is what John saw concerning this generation. An angel came crying with a loud voice, thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come, the harvest of the earth is ripe. 